people, uh, Sir George Lean, uh, various other important and eminent people. It is really a great pleasure to be here uh, this afternoon on the occasion of this uh, event uh, as we are approaching the UN High Level Meeting on NCDs, this event on mobile phones and social media in the response to NCDs. Um, I'm really personally happy to be here. I, I think this is cutting edge. Uh, I wish the auditorium was full, but you'll go and tell everyone afterwards how stimulating this was. Um, and it's really my pleasure and privilege to, to bring uh, opening remarks on behalf of the director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Myrta Roses. I just left her in Harlem where they launched uh, the Wellness Week, uh, 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 which is going to be celebrated in some eight or nine countries this week, and it will gradually spread around the world as the Get the Message campaign is going to gradually spread around the world. And I say that feeling um, uh, some, some uh, uh, godfatherly instincts, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, today we're here in, in New York at a side event of this high-level meeting, and all stakeholders have very high expectations of this high-level meeting. I think governments do, uh, civil society does, uh, many of the business uh, world have a lot of expectations. People may have different expectations, different worries, but they have a lot of expectations. And we must remember uh, uh, that we are at the beginning, though, of, of, of something. We're at the beginning of a new era in health, on, on the world, really. And I think that today's event will fit into that. As, uh, uh, it fits very well into that and, and the role of new social media on cell phones. I believe then what, what we're doing here with the Get the Message campaign will be a critical ingredient in developing a global, a much stronger global social movement utilizing uh, uh, cell phones and social media technology. I would like to tell you a little story um, of how uh, partly I became involved in this and, and then uh, Trevor Hassel. And the story begins uh, quite some time ago about a man who was rebuilding a city. He had a big job. Uh, he was trying to rebuild a city in a short time. And he found a hard time getting productivity from the workforce because the rich people locally were charging them a lot of interest on loans and had actually took, took away some of their property and they were having a hard time. Actually, it sounds familiar with some of the current going on in the world. And he couldn't get the work done. He couldn't get the city rebuilt. Uh, some people even had their children enslaved if they couldn't pay their loans. So this gives you a clue maybe it was a long time ago. And he became very angry and outraged at his situation. And he decided he was going to do something about it. He called the rich people and he said, how can you do this? Look, we're, we're not achieving what we can achieve. We can't rebuild this city because you're loan people money at such a high rate of interest, you take away their property, you're enslaving their children, it's shameful. They said, okay, yes, 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 you're right. But he knew who he was dealing with. So then he arranged a great assembly of people, all the people who were suffering to come and protest. And you can imagine the scene. You have hundreds of people who have been taken advantage of and they're protesting. Uh, they confronted the rich people. And he got the rich folks to agree that they would do certain things. But he knew who he was dealing with. And so he called the priests, who were the lawyers of the day, to witness the agreement that they would give back a bit of land, stop charging so much interest, and so on, and ease up the poor people so he could get his productive job done of building the city. You may be wondering, where am I going with all of this? What's this story about? The story is... 3,500 years old, it's the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Nehemiah is one of my heroes. Because Nehemiah systematically, see what he did? He confronted the people, he shamed them. Then he created a demonstration. Then he got an agreement to be signed. What is it we're going to do in the next couple of days? And then he did one last thing, which I wish the high level meeting was doing. He said to the rich people, if you don't honor this agreement, I will shake you from my dress like breadcrumbs. Like God, that's what God's going to do to you. Uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> that last step in the next couple of days. But I tell you that when I, that was one of the things that inspired me to think we need and how do we create a global social, how do we create a global demonstration? 
nine months, ten months ago in Bahia, in Brazil, that was in my mind on a Latin American summit on diabetes. I remember raising that question in a presentation. And I came shortly after that to the Caribbean and I talked to Trevor and I said, how can we get a billion text signatures? And he picked up the idea and ran with it. And that's where the idea was born in October last year, a million signatures from the Caribbean and a billion from the world. So we haven't got to the billion yet. So we're really still at the beginning with what has happened here in the Get the Message campaign. I hope you will, will, will forgive me that this, this personal um, uh, uh, digression in, in opening up the story um, and make it, making these opening remarks. The city, by the way, was Jerusalem. Did I say that earlier? Uh, that's what he was trying to rebuild about 3,500 years ago. Fast forward to June of last year when I met uh, for the first time the G8 and G20 research unit folks that we now take quite a lot of political advice from. And I don't know if anybody's here from that unit, I think. John Curtin or Chantal Bloin was supposed to be here. And so I said, you know, you guys have been studying summits, because they study the G8 and the G20 and how those groups make decisions. What do leaders accept? What, will they, what, what, what kind of uh, things would they accept? And one of the first things Professor Curtin said, is you've got to have a strong civil society and, and social movement. If you look at environment, if you look at MDGs, if you look at AIDS, the social movement and the civil society pressure is what pushes leaders to, to, to take certain policy actions. And that was another thing in my head, uh, thinking and talking to Trevor and to others, that we have to create a global social movement. How do you create, how do you create what Nehemiah did 3,500 years ago with his assembly, but now, today, virtually, how do you create a global demonstration? And I think that what the Get the Message campaign has done is, I believe, the first step in uh, uh, creating such a, a, a global uh, social movement. And the work that has been happening in the Caribbean, which you're going to hear about with the Healthy Caribbean Coalition and Digicel and Lime uh, actually cooperating. Health has been a bridge for peace between those two companies. Um, and Sajiko and One Caribbean Media, I think uh, we in PAHO are really, really pleased about this. When our director in March of this year, Dr. Rose, is first got got a wind of it in an email. She sent around an email to much of Pahu with words like, fantastic, this is great. We've got to support it. We've got to help with uh, making sure it's successful. So it is my pleasure to really warmly welcome you here and to say, uh, if anybody here in, this, in the audience speaks Spanish, I felt moved to say, say in Spanish, la mano de Dios está funcionando por esta iniciativa. The hand of God is working through this initiative to create the global social movement that is needed to really shake things up and, and, and make this world a better place. Um, with those uh, opening remarks, I am going to hand back over to Isabella, who is our chairperson, uh, and welcome you here again. Thank you.